This hand right here is the best mother in animation cinema. This movie is almost impossible to find. I've been trying to pay for it legally, which not a lot of people do. <laughs> yeah, I've been trying to get a copy of it and like the most I've seen is Daisy Ahead Into The Wild, which I don't really want because the original version has an end scene like that's different from all the other versions. And I think for the full cinematic experience, I sort of need that. If you wanna watch this movie, which you definitely should, she is the best mother in cinema, I promise you. This movie will definitely like make you cry. And like the more you rewatch it, the more like impactful it will become to you, I believe. Anyway, yeah, if you wanna watch this movie, watch it in its original form, the Korean version, which Hopefully it's Korean. I think it is Korean. I could be wrong, but I think it is Korean. Hopefully I'm right. Hopefully I'm right. I'm not, I'm not trying to be that person. I'm not trying to be that person. But you won't be able to listen to the full experience unless you listen to what the artist and what the like team that created said product want you to like experience. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, sorry for this long little intro. I do things unscripted and I love doing things unscripted. I feel it's the best place to do things. It feels more natural to me. And so if it's a little, little bit like, off the beaten road, don't mind that. This is just how I operate. Also, I'm not gonna say point to point what happens in the movie because that's, to me, that's not how you review a movie. Basically, there will be spoilers. I will tell you about the movie, but I'm not gonna tell you everything that happens within the movie because I want you to watch it. This is a positive review. This is not me trying to take credit for what the artist did. This is not me trying to do any of that. I want more attention to the product, to uh, Leafy. But like, I don't also want like people to just, you know, watch this video and be like, wow, I know everything about the movie. I never need to watch it. I don't like that. Anyway, we start the movie on a poultry farm. We start with Leafy basically hunched over, literally being a slave to, to the man, the big man. <laughs> basically, all these chickens are slaving away their children in order to produce food for, you know, profit for the farmer. And Leafy is basically so tired of being in the same place because I'm pretty sure she was raised here and this is like all she ever knows. She wants to go outside the establishment or at least like the little farm mill she has because she's basically barred up. It's like a jail. It's actually super depressing because majority of the hens there have been there probably their whole entire lives and it shows like a very dark nature of humanity because these egg, these poultry farms are very much real and this things like this kind of happen and it sucks, it really does suck. These hens will never know what it's like to taste freedom or at least be outside like in general, like it's very sad to think about actually. Anyway, the main character Leafy becomes unconscious from not eating too much and I'm guessing just like overall slaving herself away. Then a little later on, the farmer does his rounds and takes care of all the dead or in Leafy's case, unconscious hens and takes them to a place to where he can dump them off and bury them. Leafy gets thrown on a wheelbarrow with these dead birds and gets tossed into this pit full of all these dead birds that uh, the farmer has yet to bury. And right as she falls in, she wakes up and she gets a pretty gruesome sight, I'm not gonna lie. She wakes up to all these dead bodies that are all around her. And she also gets woken up by a weasel? Hold on. I have to fact check myself real quick. It is a weasel, okay. She gets uh, woken up by uh, dead bodies and a weasel and immediately she tries to escape. The weasel is the main quote unquote antagonist of this movie. The reason I say quote unquote is because I don't believe there is any antagonist really in this movie to be completely honest. Leafy's trying to climb out this pit and right before the weasel can actually catch up with her, this random duck basically comes and saves her from the weasel. <laughs> and I gotta say, this duck looks like they've been listening to Paramore, Pierce the Veil, freaking, Ah, Panic at the Disco, oh, Panic at the Disco. Okay, okay, let's chill, let's chill now. But yeah, they got the hairstyle and everything. They rocking some shit, but uh, anyway, they get saved and Leafy is like a little bit, Leafy's crushing on this duck a little bit. She's like, you know, you saved my life, but like, you also kind of hot though. I mean, let's be honest. <laughs> but yeah, the duck basically thinks they're him. And so they basically forget communication skills and decide I'm gonna be as ominous as possible and just walks back into the forest. 
leaving Leafy alone. Anyway, since basically Leafy has nowhere else to go, she heads back to the farm and she gets to greet all the animals that were outside of the farm. Well, outside of the little uh, hen jail cell thing, you know what I'm saying? She gets greeted by this dog who tries to scare the fuck out of her and uh, she's not really scared because I mean, how could she be? <laughs> she's been working a minimum wage job and let me tell you, minimum wage workers really don't give a fuck. We're not scared of shit. We live in paycheck to paycheck. Like we know we can die at any moment. Like <laughs> anyway, she goes to this place on the farm to where she gets to meet these like higher class birds or whatever like that and she's trying to have a conversation she's like oh i'm out you know i'm i guess i'm a part of you guys but the bird at least the head bird tries to quickly shut that down and basically put her in her place that she's a poverty girl and you're not going to be anything in your entire life <laughs> and basically feeling outcasted she basically sits outside of the door for the whole night until morning and I gotta say, it's a really sad scene. Like, the scenes in this movie are so impactful and I really, really love it. You really get to experience the pain this woman has been through and I just, I really, really enjoy this movie. Anyway, it's morning. So now she gets up and goes to the forest to where she tries to meet new people because, you know, the farm is obviously not providing that much of a safe environment for her. And we get to see how precious and pure she really is. She's surrounded by all this nature, all this beautiful scenery, this green, this yellow, all of it. And she's just like embracing it. She's never been here before. She loves it. She even gives herself a flower, which, is a representation of something later on. During her ventures, she meets an otter, which basically is the realtor of this land. He makes decisions on where people should live and basically kind of watches over them a little bit. He's basically the mayor, if I'm not mistaken, and he basically tells people where they should live. The mayor was told by the duck that saved Leafy's life um, that Leafy was gonna come to this place and basically give her a safe place to live. Overnight, she gets put in this little like flower bed basically, and then afterwards, when she wakes up, she tries to find the duck, which she calls the Wanderer. And you know, she's crushing on this duck a little bit, okay, okay? You know, I get it, I get it, I get it. You've been locked up, you you, you gotta do what you gotta do, girl. But anyway, um, she finds the Wanderer and uh, he's already, he's already got a girl. And now she feels a little embarrassed. She's just like, wow, I was crushing on this person. And he already got a girl, which you know, it's an honest mistake. Sometimes communication does help a uh, relationship, friendly or not friendly, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, she finds out that information and later that night, the duck actually gets attacked by the weasel that comes back. The weasel ends up hunting and killing the wanderer's wife, which to be honest, Elle kind of wife, I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> I should be sad for this wife, but she was on screen for less than like three frames. And then she ends up getting killed, like I don't give a fuck. Anyway, the commotion woke up Leafy and Leafy goes to inspect like her home and it founds out she was pregnant and she had an egg. And without any questions or being asked to at all, she sits on the egg and gives it warmth and basically becomes its new mother. The duck, the wanderer, gets to see this from afar and decides not to intervene at all because, you know, at the end of the day, baby gotta live. <laughs> Instead, what the wanderer decides to do is train up in order to fight this weasel. Days and days pass and Leafy is still taking care of this egg and she hasn't had anything to eat at all. Throughout this whole entire journey, she barely eats anything. I'm not gonna lie to you. She is the definition of fasting. <laughs> Yeah, days and days pass, and Leafy gets woken up by a commotion by the Wanderer. She's like, oh my god, what is this fucking boy doing? <laughs> this boy. And it turns out the Wanderer is fighting the Weasel. They were pissed off that they had to raise the kid alone, which to be honest, I get. He didn't want to be a dad. L dad. <laughs> anyway, the Wanderer is fighting the Weasel, and they end up dying in the most dramatic way possible. He ends up baiting the weasel off the cliff and both of them fall to the ground, but the weasel ends up living and the duck does not because you know, the, the weasel's just built different. <laughs> also, by the way, I forgot to say this, but the wanderer did give her three tiny pieces of fish. So she basically has eaten about nothing. So. <laughs> so once the baby is actually born, Leafy decides to take herself and the child to the Everglade, which is what the Wanderer basically called a safe place. They travel there and they get there, no huss and fuss, nothing special about it. And then they get greeted with 
some interesting neighbors, you should say. And they also get greeted by the otter because the otter is basically a landlord who owns, I guess, the whole land and decides, you live here, you live here, you live wherever I fucking tell you to live. <laughs> Leafy made it to the Everglades and she starts basically raising her child. And we get a little montage of her doing cute little things with the child, which I really do appreciate. The child's very cute and you know, their chemistry is amazing together. And then we go straight into a cute transition into the teen years. So as a teen, you wanna make connections. You wanna make connections with people of your own age, your own stature. And so Greeny, which is the name Leafy gave to the child, basically tries to make connections with the people he's lived with or lived around anyway. And that ends up not going so well because they're just like, yo, you're different from your mother. Hey, 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 racism though. <laughs> he tries to make friends with like a group of ducks and he's just like, oh, wow, you guys are so lucky you all look the same. I don't look like my mother. And um, the kids kind of like bully him a little bit and it's rough, it's rough, it's rough. <laughs> so Greeny starts to recognize differences between him and his mother, which makes sense. Any teen at this age sort of would start asking questions and everything like that. And so he starts getting like angry because you know he's getting bullied about this stuff and you don't wanna be bullied for being different from your mother. Like, I, I definitely understand that. But um, what he's not really recognizing, and of course, he's a teen, he, he doesn't really recognize it, that it doesn't really matter what you look like compared to your parents. What matters is if your parents love you. Blood doesn't really matter if there's no love. Love is what triumphs over everything. And that's why I think Leafy is such a great mother. Going back to it, Greedy starts to try and figure out what he can do with his body. Basically, his natural instincts as a duck. He tries to fly, he tries to swim. And there's a moment to where Leafy herself actually makes these like little like lily pad sort of uh, boots to like try and learn how to swim. And it's the cutest thing ever because she's just like, I, I wanna do what you do, you know? <laughs> I think it's so cute to me. But yeah, later on Leafy and Greeny have a little bit of an argument because they realize they're kind of different. Although Leafy is trying her best to basically salvage the situation at the point. But you know, you have to have like a little, there has to be like breathing room. You just have to give it a little time. And so Greeny runs off to the farm actually, which I don't know how he got there, but you know, he got to the farm. And after exploring the farm a little bit, he gets caught and tied down by the farmer. And he is yelling for help and Leafy is basically trying to look for her child. She ends up getting a lead to where Greeny is at and heads directly to the farm and without any hesitation starts attacking the farmer, which is amazing motherly instincts right there. That's an amazing mom. She doesn't care about any repercussions or what could happen. She just wants to save her baby. The farmer tosses her aside in the hen house and she immediately figures out what she needs to do. She releases all the hens and the hens make their great escape. And throughout that commotion, basically she grabs Greeny and books it. Now that they're finally free of the farm, Greeny starts to pay a little bit more respect to his mother and starts to actually understand why he loves her. And Leafy is just pissed off. But you know what? She takes a second to calm down and realize, I'm glad my child is okay. But that very, very sweet moment isn't long lived and the weasel is back and they are hungry. They start chasing Greeny and Leafy for miles, basically. And there was a point to where Leafy actually faced them head on and said, you are not gonna touch my baby. And I love this for her, but it's also extremely sad. It's extremely sad for me because she basically faces the weasel head on for a second in order to slow the weasel down from Greeny. And it feels so sad because it's such a proud moment. Like I was so proud of this mother, but at the same time, like, felt extremely sad because she knows what could happen, that this might be the end. And it's, it's such a beautiful moment to me. It actually reminds me a lot of my mother who would do that a lot. And my mother was crazy. She, she would do some of the most crazy stuff just to like, have me happy at times. Like, I know we've had our conflicts from time to time, but like, she was an amazing mother. Sadly, that moment wasn't really enough to keep the weasel at bay, and the weasel ends up pushing Greeny off a cliff, 
And Leafy's kind of hung off of a cliff as well. But right before Greeny was about to fall to his death, he ends up flying and saves himself. And in this moment, Leafy is just the most proudest mom you could ever be. It's so beautiful. I love these moments so much. Leafy cheering and supporting her child flying is just an amazing moment. I fucking love these moments. They are just so pure. After that beautiful moment, Leafy and Greeny go back to the Everglade and Greeny starts to feel a little different. I'm pretty sure Greeny has entered adulthood at this point and it's turning, slowly turning into winter. And he's starting to feel the migration, which is like where all these ducks basically migrate south for the winter. Hopefully it's south. If it's not south, I look stupid as fuck. I will take it. Sometimes you gotta look a little stupid to be a little real, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Speaking of migration, migration is a movie up and coming in December. I'm not paid or anything like that. Chill, I'm saying fuck, so I'm definitely not paid but it's movie i definitely want to go see it may be bad as hell it may be mid it probably won't be good but the thing is it's an animal movie and it's not like an anthro animal movie it's more like a personified animal movie which i that is my medium i love movies like that i'm not really the biggest fan of anthro stuff but personified animals like lady and the tramp um fox and the hound those type of stuff like rio i really do appreciate that and i will support that to make sure it stays around. Even The Secret Life of Pets, I supported, even though that movie is kinda bad, but it has dogs, and I love dogs. <laughs> Anywho, back to the movie. Um, Greeny basically sees all these ducks migrating south for the winter, and Leafy basically says you should be with them. She's ready to let her child go and let her child become what he needs to become. So back at the farm, Greeny got tied down by this uh, red little string, and what Leafy does basically is starts pecking at it, basically hurting herself in order to like make sure he doesn't like get tangled up or like stands out too much or anything like that. And I think that is like such a powerful moment. Like she's willing to put herself through so much pain in order to help this child just reach its full potential and I I don't know I, I love it I love it not a lot of people really recognize the struggles and hoops that a lot of mothers go through in order to make sure their child is like the best they can be and I think excuse me uh this movie just really showcases what some mothers I'm not gonna say all mothers but you know some mothers are actually trying their hardest to make sure their kid actually just like succeeds in life and I, I really appreciate that. Anyway, so going back to the story. So Greeny decides to do this weird little race to become head of the pack or something like the flock or something. I completely forgot and we'll research that real quick. Yeah, to become a thing they basically call the guard duck. And so he does this little race and I'm not gonna talk about the race too much because there's not much to really talk about. It's mainly like a scenery thing you have to see it for yourself but i am going to talk about how leafy is there in the shadows just rooting for her child and i fucking love it i fucking love it dude this is mother of the year dude i love everything leafy has to offer this girl has been through so much pain and she's supporting her child through and through i love it some of y'all moms Take some goddamn notes, goddamn! Anyway, after the big race, it kind of slowly transitions into winter. And um, the flower that was on Leafy's back actually just withers away. And um, since Leafy is alone in the winter, because, you know, Greeny has responsibilities to fulfill right now, um, she starts wandering off and starts, like, looking for probably a warm place to stay. And she ends up coming across this den to where the, there's these little weasel babies. You see where I'm going with this? There's these weasel babies and um, her mother's not around or anything like that. And so she decides to, you know, be a mother and just hang around them. She basically keeps them warm and basically just waits for her mother to return. What a good mother. All the while, the weasel, the antagonist, if you can call it that, is hunting and killing a duck close to her home. And um, Greeny notices this and tries to intervene and fight the weasel. And so they end up tumbling near the den and where Leafy could actually see what was going on. So now Leafy sees the weasel basically trying to kill her child. And what she does is basically pick up the weasel's baby because she recognizes that's their mom. 
And so she tries to... She tries to basically make leverage. So Leafy picks up the baby in order to negotiate, hey, you should leave my child alone, I'll leave your child alone, basically. And um, the weasel sort of agrees because she has no other reason not to. She doesn't want her babies to like die or anything like that. And so they negotiate and they basically trade off. And a lot of people might actually see this as slimy of Leafy, but I think that was very reasonable. And I don't think she was gonna actually harm the babies in general. Like, we've seen her nature. Excuse me, ooh, what the fuck? We've seen her nature, and we know she's a wholesome, pure person. And I don't think she was trying to hurt the babies at all. She was just trying to get the weasel that was attacking her son to basically back the fuck off. Leafy notices that the mother is basically a little bit starved. She can't fully nurture her children, and so she takes a little note of that. And anyway, we're just gonna skip past that for now. We're gonna get away from that. And now, Greeny is about to take off. Now here comes the second most impactful scene of the movie. So basically, Greeny is about to leave to be a guard duck and he can't always be around for his mother. And so his mother and um, Greeny are saying their goodbyes and Leafy's just showing so much support. It's just like, you know, you'll come visit, right? And everything like that. It's just a, such a sweet moment. Leafy starts to reminisce on Leafy's birth to like where he is now. Just all the moments that basically like led up to this. And she's like, I got all those memories to keep, honey. You can go on. <laughs> this is so beautiful, my God. So they do their last goodbyes, their last hugs. And then um, Greeny leaves to be a guard duck. And Leafy is just sitting there on the cliff. Now, this next scene is one of the most impactful scenes I feel in cinema, like real talk. If you watch the censored version, you will not get the full experience of the scene. So I implore you to watch the original and watch the uncensored version. This version is the definitive version of Leafy. <laughs> and no matter how I explain this, it won't be impactful enough. You have to see it for yourself and experience the whole movie. And that's why I implore you, please go watch the movie. So Leafy sits on the cliff, basically watching all these birds take away her son to become guard duck. And she's like, wow, I wish I would have learned how to fly. And she starts like flapping her wings. She's just like, yeah. And she's just so beaten and withered away at this point. And the weasel ends up coming back because she tracks her and um, she needs food for her babies. Whew. And so um, the weasel like slowly approaches Leafy and Leafy notices it, obviously. And Leafy doesn't want to fight back. She says, I know you are starving. You need food for your babies. Use me as your food. And, and, oh my gosh. Like, the recognition of motherhood from another mother right there was just extremely powerful. Giving your life away in order to help some other mother out with her babies is just one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen in the most beautiful ending to any story. <laughs> the weasel cries as she takes Leafy's life and there's a transition to snow and black. And then when we come back, we see just a little bit of the weasel dragging Leafy away, dead, to go feed her children. And I think that is one of the most powerful endings ever created. This movie is a top three movie for me. It shows what it's like to be a mother, the sacrifices, and how support and care can carry on even throughout like all your struggles. I think this is an amazing movie. I think it's genuinely a 10 out of 10. There are some very like obscene moments, like some very nasty moments, I'm not gonna lie to you. But like in general, I think this movie, the way it's written is just straight up a 10 out of 10. I really do appreciate this movie for giving me this experience and rewatching it, it only makes it stronger. When you start hearing Leafy support her child throughout like the race or th throughout childhood, 
you really start to recognize like she's gonna die and she she knows she's gonna die like throughout the whole movie you kind of recognize she's gonna die and she's saying this stuff and it sticks with you it just echoes throughout like greenie's head and throughout our heads i think it's i think it's beautiful this whole movie to me is very important it's what it's like to be a mom in my opinion basically protecting your child and recognizing when they grow up you that doesn't mean you aren't still protecting them but that they're gonna protect other people and themselves even though greenie wasn't originally leafy's baby it doesn't fucking matter it is now Anyway, that's really all I have to say. How's it going, pups? It's a canine, and I hope you have a great Mother's Day.